to outshine one another, but realize that you're there for a common purpose, and that's to serve to serve others with your gifts and talents. And sometimes um, you can quench the spirit when you're not paying attention. So I feel like it's important for musicians to be well fed as be well yeah, fed. They ain't thinking about no spirit. They ain't, some folk they don't even pray before they play. Listen, yeah. before I play, I gotta pray. You yeah, saying that that I be able to tap into what's going on. You That's know, it. If you 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 got to be in 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 the spirit yourself in order to be able to go in there and be effective and tap into the anointing and the spirit that's going on in the service at that point of time. That's it. Have it. and 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 if you don't know how to get it, tap into your spiritual life, then you plan for nothing right there. You you all for show. Uh huh. It's spirit first. God spirit first. Then is what you plan. I tell I tell most guys that I meet, I said is is ten percent, fifteen percent your plan ability and the rest of it is all what kind of person are you? Can people get along with you? You know, it doesn't matter how good you you gotta be able to be likable, you know, in, in a situation when you're traveling or you with a band, everybody gotta be on one accord. Nobody can't be coming in there with an ego or attitude like a, like they're better than everybody else because you're going to be the joker that gets sent home. I don't care how good you can play, but, I mean, it's thousands waiting to take your place. You know, That's so it. your attitude is has got to be A1. You know, so what if somebody can't play as good as you? It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we all striving to do the same thing, and that's that's to go to heaven and and to accompany the churches that's in need. That's it. So what Everybody do you think? Everybody can go play over there at the big church, you know, but but who's gonna have the small churches that's just starting and growing? Who's gonna mm-hmm. be willing not to make that big check, you know, to sacrifice for spirit for spiritual growth? That's it. So what do you think we could we could do starting today for somebody that may be listening to this broadcast? What do you think that we can do um to um how can I say it? To bring the younger generation of musicians musicians together with the elders and the seasoned ones. What do you think we can do to, you know, just try to get them to relate to one another? Well, they're going to they gonna get it out the wire because they're going to get tired of not getting booked. And, you know, they're they, they going <laughs> to they, get it out the wire. They're going to say, okay, out the wire, they're going to mature as musicians. And once you mature, you realize, okay, I can do this as I need, if I want to, if it call, if the music calls for it, not just because I'm hyped today. I just drunk a Mountain Dew and I'm crunk. You know, and I'm going to hit and tear the house down. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. So I, 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 we we really need to go back and just go to sometimes. Even myself, I go back to basic. Mm-hmm. I, I go I go and search how to play the bass guitar for beginners, and I've been playing um, twenty years. You know, I go back and start from square one because. It always helps. Sometimes you forget certain little things along the way that's pivotal, you know, just very pivotal. Yes. Now, your music career has um, taken you a lot of places and brought you in the faces of people that you probably didn't even think that you would ever be playing for. And so we're going to talk a little we're going to talk a little bit about that now. So how did you um, end up playing for some of the bigger names out here? Uh, well, I did a lot of footwork at, when I was younger. What I mean by footwork is I played for a lot of people, and um, there wasn't a lot of money all the time. It was a sacrifice most of the time. So, But I kept my face 
on the scenery to be seen. And that's the most important thing is to always be seen. Uh, so by by me being seen all the time, I ran across people, different artists, and I was doing different genres. I was doing contemporary stuff with Alabama A&M. I was uh, playing, uh, doing some crazy praise revivals uh, with Todd Hall, uh, Juanita Bynum. I had to, had the pleasure of playing behind those two, and it was a life. It, it was an eye-opening experience and, and, and life-changing moments. I mean, I did a lot. I went overseas with Alabama A and M for the first time in my life, and 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 got a whiff of the overseas air over there. That was in 2008, and uh, I went over there again with the with the Highway QC in 2015, and it, it's just it was just good to get out of the country and see how much other people appreciate our music. You know, it's like they know they know more about our music than we know. They really do. <laughs> yeah. They'll sit down and tell you some stuff about your own music that we didn't know. I was like, whoa, okay. They got the history on lock. But but it was real good. I went to the Stellas twice uh with the qcs and that that was an experience for him i got i got to see a lot of people there i had never seen like kurt franklin and uh mr brown and uh, uh anthony from anthony uh group therapy and all of that and i also played behind lawrence flowers and that was an experience for me too uh so it, I just went a lot of ways. I used to I used to travel with the Drifters, uh, so many so many different names that which I I don't forgot, you know, over the years. I should have been recording more, <laughs> but that was before Facebook. <laughs> well, you know, we don't think about things like that when we're first starting out. You don't think about it that this is history. I'm making history right here because it doesn't seem like it then. But then when you look back 20 years ago, you're like, wow. I came such a long way, you know. Exactly. Don't think about it then. Maybe you should just start writing it down, you know, as it comes to your memory. Okay, so when did exactly. you get your first professional gig, and, and who was it with? Um, I guess on the quartet scenery, mm-hmm. it was, uh, I started playing with Spencer. It's been 10 years now. Right after I got back from overseas with Alabama A&M, I started and I uh, did a contract with Spencer for a few years. And I was like, man, I don't need no contract, man. We good. Word of mouth is good enough. And when when I make my word with you, it's like I buzz. So I'm I'm here to the wheels fall off, you know. And uh, it's been a good it, it's been a good 10 years with Spencer, and he took me all over the world. And I got I got to say that that's one of the best gigs you can have out in the quartet. You know, in my opinion, you know the business is so tight. It's a well known. Is I mean, it just runs like an oil machine, and that's how business should be. Mhm. And it speaks yeah. for itself. Whenever you look at the um, longevity of it, it's really speaking for itself. Um, right. So, what's it like being on the road, though? I mean, you're gone most of the time. What's it like, and what do you do whenever you do get back? What type of hobbies do you have besides music? It's 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 great being out because you meet a lot of people and a lot of different musicians, and you you're learning. It's a learning. It's always a learning process because it's always something that you miss that somebody else, you know, what I'm saying that they're doing, and they be like, "Yo, this and that," and blah blah blah. They might do this. I like. I like that, man. Let me see what you did, you know. So, I mean, this is a, this is always a learning experience, and I produce on the side. I, I did a couple of uh, records with the uh, QCs. I did a few songs on the Godfather album, and um, it was a blessing to do that. But, I mean, the road life is, is such an experience because uh, Mr. Taylor, he had, I mean, this is a man that, that he traveled doing doing uh the civil rights movement, doing doing uh all the all the um bad times in history that, you know, uh, presidents being assassinated been assassinated. He he seen all that and when when 
singers couldn't even uh, go to a certain hotel, and they could they had to. They couldn't go in the restaurants while you were traveling. They they had to use certain gas stations. And I just hear all these stories about what went on back then and on down to as it got better for us. You know what I mean? And it, it's just a blessing to be with somebody that, that was out that long and went through all that because it, it really teaches you about the life we live in now is gravy. Back in the day when they was on the first start coming on the road in the 50s, they how would QC had their first hit record in, in the 50s? Can you imagine traveling in the 50s? Wow. I mean, you know, with everything that was going on back then, the recession, all that. You know, if, if you made $100 back then, whoa. You know, it was something. So, I mean, and, and they traveled from state to state different states and different towns is is crazy but but it's also great history now i appreciate the fact that uh he let me ride and share the history with with that group that's awesome and it's also history that should um teach others to be humble because we are at a at, at an advantage that they didn't have back then and that's another reason why we should honor and respect our elders, even when we disagree with with some things that they say in music and stuff, we still need to have that level of respect there. When I see younger artists and musicians just steady talking, black, 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 you know, just talking about the older heads, what the older heads don't respect us, if they won't respect, they got to respect us. But you don't understand what they went through. You don't have the same type of anointing that these guys have that have carried them through. They have longevity in their background, and you know God had to be with them to bring them through those storms and those valleys like that. And as Lee Williams would say, more hills and more hills. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. You know know God had to be with them. That's why they're still here. That's why they're still making music. That's why they're still traveling. That's why they're still singing. Because they had to go through something to open the doors up for this younger generation. And it's a way to work with one another that God will get the glory out of all of it. Um, Let me read this scripture to you. First Chronicle 23 and 5 says, 4,000 gatekeepers and 4,000 shall offer praise. Uh to the Lord with the instruments that I have made for praise. So you see, right. music, God has anointed people to just do what they do with these instruments and love one another. The gift is not for yourself. It's to serve others. And that's why I thank God for men like you two and also the legendary Spencer Taylor, who doesn't have to share anything, but he does. My yeah. God. That's awesome. That is so awesome. So I understand that you are endorsed by Alan Eden. Tell us how did that come about and what all, you know, what all do you just do or, you know, if somebody's listening and they're like, well, I think I'm good enough to be endorsed, uh, tell what comes with that, with that territory. Uh, well, that that was something major for me. And uh, I appreciate the guys out at the company, Ty Staples, Alan Eaton, for considering me. Uh, I saw their basis, uh, and uh, I, I hit them up. I was like, you know what? I do gospel. I don't know whether y'all in, endorse gospel uh, artists, but I, I travel a lot. And I sent them my resume and some videos and stuff like that, and he hooked me up. And, and it was great. I mean, they've been supplying me with some great basses and some great colored instruments. I mean, I mean, the colors are crazy. And um, I really appreciate everything that they're doing. But I went and hit him up and gave him my stuff. And he was like, okay, well, you're traveling. So, I mean, you you, you may like this. You may like that. And I said, well, let, let, me, let me just get one right now. After I got my first one, I ended up getting two more. I said, Lord, have mercy. I mean, <laughs> these things I'm going to buy. But yeah, that, they're a great base company out in California, and they're, they're starting new, and they got some great product. And I don't know whether they whether they're coming with an amplifier line soon, but they they got lead and bass guitars, 
great colors, great schemes, great sounds, great electronics, everything. 